Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on this channel I post a lot of anti-MLM commentary content. So we'll read something, we'll watch something, and then I'll offer my thoughts and opinions on it. If that kind of content does interest you, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, liking this video, leaving a comment. All those things help to support the channel. It gets the word out a little bit farther and we can have this information reach a wider audience, which is obviously the goal. For today's video, I'm bringing you another MLM Zoom call. This is from a company I have never covered before, I have never talked about them before, and I have never heard of before. And that MLM company is called Park Lane Jewelry. I have covered so many Zoom call trainings from Monate, Arbon, Young Living, Beachbody, Modere, but you guys, I have never heard of Park Lane Jewelry. I've been making anti-MLM videos for over a year now, and it wasn't until December of 2022 that I even looked into this company. Do I live under a rock? Have you heard of this company? Their website states that they were founded in 1955 and they are quote, the leading direct sales jewelry party plan company apparently. So how has this flown under my radar for this long? And I think that this just goes to show that there are hundreds, if not thousands of MLM companies out there. There's new ones popping up all the time it seems. And I'm excited that somebody sent me this Zoom call and gave me the opportunity to look into this company a little bit further and to be able to use this platform to share it with you all. In general, there's two different kinds of MLM Zoom calls that I cover. There's what I call training calls or team calls, and then there's opportunity calls. This is going to be a training call or a team call in which a person towards the top of the pyramid or towards the top of the team host a Zoom call to train their downline on a variety of different topics in the hopes of helping the people at the bottom of the pyramid improve their performance in the company and therefore be able to rise in the ranks and recruit their own people. In in this case, this training call is focused on the most important aspect of an MLM company ever. Say it with me, recruiting. <laughs> this should come as no surprise. Many MLM training calls focus on how to recruit more people because that is the lifeblood of the business. That is how the company stays afloat and that's how people make the most money is by recruiting other people and building a downline. Very infrequently do we see team calls training on how to sell the product. <laughs> or how to increase sales. Those topics aren't covered very much because those aren't the most profitable things to be doing in an MLM company. So that's not where the time or the energy or the focus goes. This Zoom call is hosted by a team in Park Lane Jewelry that calls themselves the Treasure Tribe and they call their training calls Treasure Talks. So those terms will come up a few times in the conversation here. So when you hear those terms, that's what they're talking about. And the subject line of the email from the person who sent me this Zoom call said, says Park Lane Jewelry is a pyramid scheme. So I'm excited to see how badly they expose themselves here. There is a few minutes of chit chat at the beginning of this Zoom call that isn't related to the topic of the call. So we're gonna skip past that and we're gonna jump in at the point in the call where they start talking about the main topic of the day, recruiting. All right, so with that, we're going to switch gears for a moment. And today's talk is all about recruiting and I've got two special guests with us today. The first is Lori Mercer, who you're going to be hearing from in a moment. Lori Mercer is um, one of our incredible leaders who has been with the Treasure Tribe for, um, I think, a, close to four years now, if not quite four years. I look forward to you hearing from her and her talking about her Mercer method, which has become quite famous within our tribe. And then you're going to be hearing from Kathy Cassidy, who is our national director, who's going to be talking about the Direct Appoint program. Um, before I introduce Lori and pass it over to her, this is what I want to say. How many of you on this Zoom today, and we have 98 of you here right now present, plus everybody watching on Facebook. How many are you, of you are watching today because you want to increase and grow your, in, your park lane income? Pop a three in the comments if you want to increase and grow your park lane income. Okay, it seems to be a pretty a pretty popular thing that many of you want to do. I'm not surprised that you're telling me this because you're on this call. You're here to grow and learn, right? For those of you that have said that are saying lots of threes, yes, 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 or that a little bit of threes, yes, I want to grow and and increase my income. I am here to tell you right now the smartest way to grow your income is to master recruiting. It is the smart 
fastest way. That took her exactly one minute and 42 seconds into this Zoom call to admit that recruiting is the best way to make money in this MLM company. I mean, hey, props to her for just getting that out of the way right off the bat. But here's an article from Investopedia about the different types of pyramid schemes there are. And under the multi-level marketing section, it says multi-level marketing is a legal business program. However, some pyramid schemes disguise themselves as MLMs. The Federal Trade Commission warns people to take note of and avoid MLM promoters who try to persuade people that recruiting others is where the real money lies. Similarly, here's an article from the FTC website titled, What's a Pyramid Scheme and How Do You Spot One? Pyramid schemes are scams. They can look remarkably like legitimate MLM business opportunities and often sell actual products, maybe even ones that you've heard of. They may say that you can change your life, quit your job, and even get rich by selling the company's products. That's a lie. Your income would be based mostly on how many people you recruit, not how much product you sell. Pyramid schemes are set up to encourage everyone to keep recruiting people to keep a constant stream of new distributors and their money flowing into the business. And finally, down further on that same article, it says here are some warning signs of a pyramid scheme. Promoters emphasize recruiting new distributors for your sales network as the real way to make money. Walk away. In a legitimate MLM program, you should be able to make money just just by selling the product. So already, within the first two minutes of this Zoom call, red flags are going up that this might not be a legitimate business opportunity, but rather it's a money-making scheme. Due to the fact that she prefaces this call by saying, quote, the smartest way to grow your income is to master recruiting. AKA, you make more money building a team and recruiting people in Park Lane jewelry than you do actually selling the jewelry. Great, can't wait to see where this goes from here because she's already outed her I feel like I could just cut this video off right now. You get the point. But somehow I feel like they're gonna just keep digging themselves into this hole. So let's see. You could be here and you could increase your sales and you could grow your income by increasing your sales. But that requires you doing more parties and all the things and always having to sell at that higher level. And if you want to do that, you are welcome to do that. We encourage you to do that, especially during the holiday season, taking advantage of it, like go for it. It's immediate income today. You can immediately income your increase your income today, this month, this week by selling more, of course. But we have a smarter way here to help you increase your income long-term. You could make money by selling the product, but that's really hard. That's gonna take a lot of energy and a lot of time and we don't wanna do that. What do we really want? We want fast cash. What's the best way to do that? Recruit more people. And that is by mastering recruiting. And oftentimes I feel like it's literally switching a button. It's making a couple of tweaks and those couple of tweaks can make a huge difference. And you know, one of the reasons why it's so important to master recruiting, once you master recruiting, you can actually actually teach your team how to master it as well. And that's where it like is tenfold with your income. Like that's where it, it's like mind blowing what you can then grow your income to be. And I have a feeling there are some of you on this call, on this treasure talk today, who maybe you'd like this to make this your, your main gig, like your full-time gig. Like you'd like, maybe you have another job and you'd like to step away from that other job and this be your main thing. Maybe you're in a place where in a year or two years or four years, you're gonna have kids going off to college or kids starting school and you want them to go to a special place or maybe a private school, or maybe you've had these big dreams in your head. Like you'd love to take your family to Hawaii, or you'd love to do this big trip to Disney world, like things that cost $10,000 for the trip, you know, like big things. I'm here to tell you, you can be sitting here right now and think that you are not good at recruiting and become a master recruiter, become a rooted recruiting rock star. Okay, so I want you to open your brain and open your mind and be willing to take it and stop telling yourself a story in your head that's simply not true. All right, because we are here to help you work smarter, not harder. I mean that like I truly mean that, which is why we're doing today's Zoom.
This lady is doing my whole job for me. This is incredible. Do you even need me here? Do you need my commentary? Because she is outing herself here so explicitly that it's almost unbelievable. And she said the cliche term, work smarter, not harder. And I really do think that that is the foundation of how MLM reps think about their business. Because pretty much from the moment that you join an MLM, it becomes crystal clear that the harder route to make money is by selling the product. Think of how many customers you would need. Think about how many orders you would have to place. And jewelry is not really a consumable product in the sense that you're gonna use it all up and need to buy more. So finding a customer base large enough or reliable enough to fulfill all of these orders to make you the amount of money that you wanna make, that is the hard route. That is not the most efficient way to make money. And they know that. You are not gonna increase your earning potential if you just focus on selling the product to a customer. You'll be able to earn a lot more money if you build a team of people under you and you're able to take cuts of their commission as well. It's not rocket science. This is not a difficult concept to grasp. The more hands on deck, the better. The more people on your team, the higher your earning potential because the more people you're able to take cuts of commission from. That is a true fact of MLM compensation plans. That is how they work. That's how they function. But it's also a glaring red flag because in order for a scheme of this nature to survive for any amount of time, there would have to be that endless chain of recruitment, which as we know is impossible because there's a limited number of humans on planet earth to recruit. If the business opportunity or the company that you are joining emphasizes recruitment as the best way to make money, that is the most massive warning sign to you that this is a really unsustainable and unreliable way to make money. I'm just telling you right now, building your whole paycheck based on how many people you can recruit into this business opportunity sounds like an absolute nightmare and you want to distance yourself as far as possible from something like that. All right, Lori, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Hello, hello, Miss Lori. I'm going to unpin myself here. I'm looking for you. There you are. Wait, I just lost you. Hold on. There you are. Um, okay, before I before I kind of pass this over to Lori, um, Lori's been in the business how many years now, Lori? Um, I think I'm starting my eighth year. Okay, eighth year and about, is it about four here at Park Lane? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my fourth. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. And I would say that, or I, I remember us having a conversation. I always like, like to preface it with the conversation. Us having this conversation, because this is the important piece of the story, in my opinion. And you were like, and you tell me if I'm wrong on this, but this, I'm going to probably like, put, I'm going to make this a little more exciting than probably what the conversation was. But Lori was like, I am just, I'm just not. I'm not doing a really good job of recruiting. I don't know what it is. Like, I, I just remember something along those lines. Am I wrong here, Lori, or you refresh my memory? No, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, but I know you can be because you have been before. I think your words were, it's time. <laughs> it's time. It was, it's that time. Was the fish of love. It's time to rip the band aid. I know what you're capable of. I know what's possible and you deserve it. And you have, you've mastered the business. Why in the world would you not want to be teaching others how to do what you know how to do? Like, that's really where I was coming from. And I also knew Lori was in a place. Lori is a um, dental hygienist by trade, but then she was a teacher or professor at a dental hygiene school. Correct, Lori? Yeah. Dental assisting school. Yeah. Dental, dental assisting school. And you know, she was trying to maneuver both and it was getting challenging, correct? Mm -hmm. And you wanted to make this your thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, we got to help you make more money, which means we got to help you recruit more people. It's that simple, yeah. right? Right. It really is that simple. More recruits equals more money. Thank you for this. <laughs> if you want to make enough money to quit your job as a dental hygienist and make Park Lane Jewelry your full-time job, you got to focus on recruiting. Ding, ding, ding. We have a pyramid scheme. So now where the Zoom call is going to go is the second lady is being introduced and she's about to tell us her quote unquote Mercer method, her step-by-step -step process for how she was able to recruit a ton of people. She is showing us all of her strategies and she's telling us, here's how I I worked people to get them to sign up on my team so that I could make more money. <laughs> so cringy, but also really fascinating to see that curtain be pulled back. So then Lori took it upon herself to go change the story. All right. 
And she started doing something that instantaneously started getting incredible results. And the power of this that she's going to share with you guys is not only did it help her start becoming a recruiting rock star, but then she started teaching it to her team. And then her team started utilizing it. And Lori's team has been exploding for the last year or longer. So, okay, I'm going to pass it to you, Lori. Thank you. Well, gosh, I'm not sure how to follow all of that, but um, thank you for having me. Thanks to everybody for being here. So I do think um, as I was thinking this morning about what I wanted to say, I mean, I can, and I'm going to share with you the actual Mercer method like steps, but I do think the most important part of the story is actually why, why I developed this system for myself. I think that's key and I think it can relate to a lot of you. So it was literally two years ago right now, the end of November, beginning of December, and I had a, a very robust party schedule at that time. You guys who that were in the business at that time probably remember that was an amazing time as our online businesses were ramping up and taking off. And I was highly focused on booking parties and selling. And it was fun and it was busy and I was still working part time at that time. I have two little kids at home. Um, it was crazy, but it was fun. But I was completely neglecting the um, team building portion of my business. I was not recruiting. And so I wasn't recruiting. And so my team, my team wasn't recruiting at any high level by any means. And I knew that I had to make a shift, um, but I had um, basically two obstacles that I had to overcome for myself. One was that I time. Okay. I felt like uh, I have these parties. I'm doing all this hostess coaching. I'm working. I've got kids. How am I going to actually carve out separate time to recruit? I just didn't feel like I had extra time. Okay. So that was my one obstacle I had in my mind. The other was I hate, you guys can put a one in the comment if you can relate to this. I don't like cold reach outs. I don't like making a big long list and reaching out to people I haven't talked to in six months or more who haven't shopped with me. I don't, do I have to do it sometimes? Yes. Is it a part of this business? 100% yes, it is always going to be a part of this business. So we're always going to have to make lists. We're going to have to be reaching out and do things that are not comfortable. But if there's ever a way that I can focus more on warm leads and not on the cold reach outs, that's where I would prefer to focus. Okay. I want to expand on these terms of cold and warm markets in case you're not familiar. The term warm market is referring to those people that are closest to you. Think your closest friends, your family, the relatives that you speak with frequently, your coworkers that you see every day. This warm market of people is where you're encouraged to begin when you're trying to recruit for your MLM because this group of people knows you personally, presumably they like you, and they would be easier to talk to and get on the hook for this kind of thing. They might be more willing to listen to you or to look into your opportunity or to do you a favor by buying a product or do you a favor by signing up under you so you can hit some kind of goal. Your warm market is where you start, but eventually you're going to run out of people in your warm market. You only know so many people. So the next group of people you have to go to is called your cold market, which is essentially strangers or very, very distant acquaintances like your old high school classmates, your coworkers from that part-time job you had in college. College, the person that you follow on social media, but you've never actually met in real life, those kinds of people. These people don't know you very well, and it would be awkward to receive a message or a pitch from you. And that's where the term cold message comes from. Some people get desperate enough that they expand their cold market to mean literally anybody with a pulse. Any profile you come across on social media, any stranger in the grocery store, seriously, anybody out there is an opportunity for you. Some people People do look at it that way. And it's kind of become a cliche that we joke about these days that MLM reps will reach out to people using a cold message, starting off with something like, hey girl, or hey hun. And that's where the term MLM huns comes from. Recently, I've gotten quite a few questions being like, what's a hun? Why do you call them MLM huns? And that's where this nickname comes from. It comes from the fact that people in MLMs cold message strangers saying, hey hun, I have an opportunity for you. So anyway, back to the call. I just wanted to clear
clear that up for anyone who might be new here or who doesn't know what those terms mean. So those were kind of the two things I was like, all right, how do I, how do I grow my team and accomplish these other two goals that I have? So I thought, okay, I'm having all these parties. I am making all these carts for people. What people are ordering, these are my people. These are my warm leads. They're right here in front of me and I am just not asking. I'm just not asking. I'm asking for parties, I'm asking for sales, but I am not asking them to join my team. And so um, I thought, okay, I can, I'm asking these people for other things. I'm just going to start asking them to join me every single person. And this is where it's going to get uncomfortable. Is everybody starting to like wail in their seat a little bit? They're like, what do you mean? Like ask every single person, this is going to be uncomfortable. And <laughs> there's no way around that in the beginning. And this is why I call it a system. Okay. Cause I think if you can systemize something, it takes the emotion out of it. You can detach yourself from the outcome and just do the work. Right. We know how we have when we host as coach, we just do the work. Maybe we don't always like it, but we, we know the steps. We have to do the steps to have successful parties. It's the same with recruiting. You have to just do the steps and um, not get too caught up in the emotion part of it, which is that's the hard part. OK, so make it a system. I see what she's saying regarding taking the emotion out of it and making it a system. But at the same time, I think that people can easily see right through that. I'm talking about the people that you're pitching. Like when you approach it that way and you treat people like it's a system and like they're just another cog in the wheel or another number, that doesn't make people feel very good. I feel like people can catch on to that pretty quickly. The work that you're doing to recruit people into an MLM is essentially you're talking to them, you're building a connection with them in a way that you can hopefully convince or persuade them to fall for whatever you're pitching. And when you try to quote unquote, take the emotion out of it and you just start treating people like they're numbers or dollar signs or like an opportunity for you to make money, they're gonna catch on. This is why cold messages are typically ineffective because it's so clear that you've just copied and pasted that same message from someone else. It's clear to me that you don't care about me. You don't wanna get to know me as a person because you're treating me in such a way that's really impersonal and robotic. However, However, though, this woman is featured to be speaking on this call because of her super effective method and whatever she's suggesting apparently worked really well for her. So who knows, maybe there is something to it and maybe she was really successful doing this at one time, but I'm just saying that today in 2023, 2023, so weird to say that. I feel like this whole idea of creating a system is becoming really ineffective because there is so much more awareness around these companies and there's so much anti-MLM content out there exposing these exact tactics and showing you here's what to look out for. People are a lot more cautious and wary of MLM opportunities and cold messages these days. And it's hard for me to believe that treating people like numbers or steps in your system is going to continue to be as effective in the future as it may have been in the past. Um, so what I decided to do was every single person that sent me a wish list in my parties I was immediately sending them back a message that was basically the same message for every person um, because I don't know them. Remember, I don't know these people at all, which is actually another perk that I'm going to throw out that I think is an advantage to doing this. I am not talking myself out of asking them. I don't know if how many kids they have or if how many hours a week they work or what their age is. I don't know any of that. All I know is that they love the jewelry. So I'm not like, oh, she wouldn't do it because of this or she would never be interested because of that. I don't know anything about her. Well, dang, I should have just let it run for 30 more seconds, but there you go. She's admitting that she doesn't know anything about these people, that they are complete strangers, that she's copying and pasting the same message to everyone. She's treating them like pawns in her MLM recruitment game. So that was actually easier for me um, to not know. I would just say, hey, thanks so much for sending your list. Um, I'm gonna get to work on the magic math. And then I would say, I know this is going to sound crazy, but when I see a list like this, I have to ask, have you ever thought about doing something like this? Clearly you have great taste. You love the jewelry. It's a ton of fun. I think you might love it. And that's the first thing they're hearing from me. So they're texting it to me or they're private messaging to me, however they're communicating with me. And so I just throw it out there. 
And I literally rip the Band-Aid off and throw it out. Um, and I, I, there's basically, you know, a couple of scenarios, right? So let me give you best case scenario. They come back and usually there's an objection. Almost always there's an objection. I'd say 99% of the time there's an objection. And it's always, it's always time, right? Everybody's busy and they don't they don't realize how they can work it into their schedule or maybe they work for another direct selling company which is where kathy's going to come in here in a minute um there's a lot of other a lot of things that they're going to say to you so you know i'm going to overcome those objections like we're taught to do there's information in boards on how to overcome objections i'm going to start chatting with her a little bit about that the minute i get any kind of a maybe i am immediately utilizing our third party tools that our treasure tribe is so incredible at providing us so she's you know maybe i get the response well i've never thought about it but i do love jewelry oh my gosh yes park lane's amazing you know you love the perks we get so much free jewelry um i have a great video i'd love to send you it's, it's really short it's a lot of great information i'd love your feedback may i send it to you so i might send her you know tisha's seven minute video out of boards or now we have the youtube channel right so i would be sending the link to that youtube and then we know there's a new video in there every thursday so there's going to be new content for them or maybe your team does a, um, a weekly or monthly opportunity event that you would want to invite them to some kind of third party that you are comfortable using and sharing i'm going to immediately start using that Okay, because I want her to hear from somebody other than me. And it actually feels like it takes a lot of pressure off of my shoulders to say, hey, go check this out, too. And then, of course, there's the follow up. Don't ever forget the, about the follow up. We could have a whole treasure talk just on follow up, but you can't just throw it out there and then like cross your fingers, like posting and praying. You can't do that. You have to make sure you're checking back with her in a day or two. You know, sometimes these things, not sometimes, they usually take time. But you have to plant the seeds so that you can water them and check back in with them, you know, over time. Some you may recruit right away. Some it might be a year from now from that seed that you planted today. I don't know about you, but this idea of planting the seed today and then following up with people over the course of weeks, months or years sounds absolutely miserable and exhausting. It would be miserable to try and keep track of all of these strangers that you've started conversations with and keep track of where they are in your system and when's the last time you reached out to them. But it also sounds miserable for the people on the receiving end of those messages too. Look, if I get a cold message from somebody in an MLM and I tell them no, that should be the end of it. My no is not your invitation to keep asking me. No is a complete sentence and I don't owe you an explanation as to why I'm saying no. If I tell you no, my expectation is that I never hear from you again, quite frankly. But that's not an option for MLM reps. They feel the need to pester and pry to try and get what they want in the end. They feel like they need to pop up or check in every so often to see if you've changed your mind. And I guess this is a moment where taking the emotion out of it would probably be really good for an MLM rep because it can't feel good to you morally to be pestering strangers as part of your your job. I can't imagine that anyone truly enjoys or feels right doing that. So it is probably for the best for your own sanity to just numb yourself to it and go down this series of copy and paste messages and treat it like a system, if for no other reason than to protect your own self-esteem. To an extent, I do kind of get it. People need to be really convinced to do a lot of things. For example, somebody might need to see a product ad for something 10 times before they ever consider buying it. Someone might need to watch 20 of my videos before they ever consider subscribing. People might need to have a hundred conversations with somebody to feel comfortable enough trusting them with some kind of information. I understand the concept that you can't just cold message someone and expect them to be all in right off the bat. I get that from a business perspective, but just from a human perspective, it feels gross to treat somebody like that. It does
doesn't feel good to keep pestering someone when they have stood their ground and given you reasons as to why they're not interested. And just recognize that that's a pretty big portion of your job duties as an MLM representative. And if you're not comfortable doing that, you're likely not gonna make it far in the business. You're likely not gonna have that many recruits. And I think that is one of the elements that people start to recognize that maybe they don't wanna be involved with their MLM anymore is when they realize what they have to do to get recruits and they don't feel comfortable doing that. And that may be one of the catalysts that help people realize that they don't wanna be in their MLM anymore and they don't wanna have to do these things. And if that's what it takes to be successful, I'm not interested. So just keep that in mind, I guess, that if you're not able to desensitize yourself or to remove yourself from this icky feeling of having to manipulate people to get what you want out of your business, then MLMs might not be for you. And I need to pause this video right here because my cats are the cutest thing ever right now. This is a complete tangent, so not related to the video, but what I'm sitting in right now is my daughter's nursery. This used to be the guest room. It's always been my filming room. Now we're transitioning it to a nursery. She won't be in this nursery for a few months until after she's born, but as soon as she is, I'm getting kicked out. I need to find somewhere else to go film in my house. But look at this, they are loving her changing pad. They're not interested at all in her crib really, but these days when I'm filming, they'll just snuggle up on her changing pad together and it's so cute. They 100% believe that every new piece of furniture in the house right now is for them. For all they know, that's their new cat bed and we're gonna have to train them out of it. But as long as I'm in here and I'm filming and I'm watching them, it's fine. Usually when I'm filming, they're all up in my business. They always come onto my desk or they rub on my feet. But since we put that changing pad there, that's where they like to hang out, so. Anyway, sorry for the tangent. Consider that to be your cat cameo for this video. Let's get back into it. So that would be best case scenario. I get a maybe-ish, I provide them with a third party tool and then I continue to follow up with them. Um, I also get crickets. Sometimes people just flat don't respond at all to that particular comment. And in the meantime, you guys, I am working with them on their order, right? They've sent me a wish list. So we're going, I threw that out there but we're still going back and forth. You know, what color, what size, you can have two more half offs. You know, we're doing all that intermingled in with this recruiting conversation. Okay, so I'm working on her order. She's turned me, let's say she turns me down, flat turns me down for the opportunity. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, that is going to happen. Okay, it's gonna happen. Um, then, but she's gonna have a much harder time telling you no a second time. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in for the booking. <laughs> like, okay, I get it, no no problem. Um, I would love to do one of these fun style sessions for you. You know, maybe you weren't able to get her everything on her wish list with this order, or you know she has other things she loves. Um, you know her friends are gonna love the sale. Whatever your normal booking words would be, you would wanna go in, go in for that booking even though she turned you down for the opportunity. Um, and, and you're going to get more more bookings out of doing the Mercer method as well. Your team will grow, but you are going to get more bookings too. And then if you don't get the booking, which is going to happen, she is going to, some are going to turn you down both times. Then my third response is, um, I would love to stay connected with you. I would love to invite you to my VIP group. I do fun sales, sneak peeks, lots of giveaways. May I send you a link? May I, you know, may I invite you? And they're 99% of the time are like, sure, yes, send, you know, invite me to the group. Okay. So my goal is always to get everybody into one of three buckets. I want them to join my team. I want them to host a party with me, or I want them in my VIP group. And so, um, so that's what I did. I started, I started doing that right away. And it was really hard in the beginning. I, like I say, it's going to make you uncomfortable, but now it's just, it's just my system. I, it's not as emo, I'm not, I'm not as emotionally attached to, oh my gosh, what are they going to think about me? Are they going to think I'm pushy? Are they going to, are they going to be turned off? Are they going to, are they going to love it? I mean, people still placed orders. They joined my VIP group. They hosted, they joined. Um, and I learned the most interesting things about people. I started out not knowing anything about them, right? Other than that, they love the jewelry. And if they love the jewelry, they might love selling it. Um, but, but when you start having those conversations, you learn so much about them. You learn, you know, the good and the bad. And, um, I, I remember one, this one stands out to me and she ended up joining my team, but 
I, I threw this out to her. She was one of the very first people I threw it out to. And her response back to me was, well, I've actually been researching jewelry companies. What? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> and I would have never known that, right? She was just in this party, probably kind of spying, checking it out, watching what I was doing. Didn't volunteer any of that information to me, but I asked, and if I didn't ask, I wouldn't know. And um, and you learn you learn sometimes the most beautiful stories about people. You know, they're going through th something really hard, and they're like, "Well, maybe this would be a fun distraction," or, um, you know, "Not right now. I'm going through this awful thing." But you know what? Hit me up in six months. I would love to. It's just really interesting and really empowering and moving what you actually learn about people just by asking them the question. And in the meantime, your team is going to grow, you're going to book more parties, and you're going to grow your VIP group. And you know, we talk about how um, if someone says no to the first thing you ask them, often they'll say yes to the second thing. I bet you get more bookings because you lead with the opportunity. Yes. Yeah. And they, and that, I mean, going back to this being the, the start of my eighth year, always working with Tish and Sarah and Heidi and everybody always saying, lead with the opportunity. Since day one of this business, lead with the opportunity. I've never done that until I got to a point in my life where I needed to be more efficient. And this was honestly the most, for me, it's the most efficient way to squeeze everything in that I need to get in, um, in, the, in the, in a time frame in which that works for me, because I know, put a two in the comment, ladies, who here's busy? <laughs> Who's busy? Who needs to maximize their time, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, all of us. So it's when you type that into your phone or you copy it over from boards or however you create your Mercer message, <laughs> think, when you're afraid to send it, think to yourself, this is what I, this is what I did. I don't have other time. This is my opportunity. I need to grow my team. And this is my why. So you know what? I'm going to do it. That's how you that's how you do it. You take the emotion out of it by focusing on your why, just like everything else in this business. What I'm feeling like this Mercer method, as she's calling it, naming it after herself, relies on the most is breaking people down. Oh, they don't want to join my team. Okay, I'm going to ask them to host a party for me instead because they can't say no to me twice. Oh, they did say no to me twice. Okay, they can't host a party either. Let's offer them the VIP group. Surely they can't shoot me down three times in a row. Oh, crap. They said no three times in a row. Okay, I'm going to come back and I'm going to harass them in a few months. Maybe then I'll get a different answer. To me, it feels slimy. Even though this woman seems like a lovely human, she's still designing a pretty manipulative method for pestering people until they break. And that doesn't feel good to me morally. These recommendations, this method does not feel like a good one when you consider that it requires you to back people into a corner and to make them uncomfortable and continually ask them for things until they give you what you want. Again, I can understand the business side of it and the logistical side of it, but it does not feel good or appropriate for one human to be treating another human this way. Olivia asked this question. I want I want you to address this. She says, do the hostesses get upset when their guests join because they don't get rewards? So basically, I think Olivia is asking like if they decide to join versus, I guess, placing an order essentially is what she's talking about. I did not have that very often. I think maybe one time I can think of because <clears throat> um, because once the conversation starts going that way, like, oh, well, maybe I won't order and I'll just get, you know, maybe I'll sign up and I'll be like, oh, you know what? Why don't you pick a couple of things on your list and let's place them on <coughs> Tisha's party so that she because, you know, we're still working to get her to those 10 orders and every order counts. And I basically just say you've got to place an order on her party. <laughs> in a really nice way um because you know and she'll get that she'll be like oh okay yeah i'm because lots of times i just don't think they're they're just not thinking about it it's not that they don't want to support their friend they just get to think they're, now they're changing their thought process like oh well maybe i'll do the business and it makes sense financially to just save my jewelry for them but when i say well what about if we just pick like those dotty studs that you're wanting let's 
get those on Tisha's party and then she gets an order and then we can get everything else on your list with your kit. Which is still a crazy deal, better than whatever her her uh, order would be with the cart that, you know, with the long list she's put together. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. it. You know, we talk, guys, about how the party is everything. The party is everything. The party is everything. The party is our system. The party is the magic. And this is what we're talking about. It opens, you know, every time. I mean, even if you're doing these virtually, just imagine yourself walking into your host's living room and all of the people in that group, you are getting the opportunity to meet, to connect with, to get to know. And because we don't see them in person, if this is a virtual party, you've got to use that opportunity when they are sending you that wish list to become more than just the person on the other end receiving the wish list. You know, you, you want to start a conversation with them. Let's take a moment to explain the party system because they've mentioned it a lot on this call. It's clearly a huge part of how they make sales and how they network with people. So Park Lane Jewelry appears to be a party-based MLM, which in my opinion and the way that I would look at it is what I would call an old school MLM. Party-based MLMs are becoming way less common these days. Most of the new companies that are popping up right now are not reliant upon hosting parties as part of their compensation plan or their sales strategy. But party-based MLMs work by you as the rep for the company going out there and finding hosts who are not necessarily affiliated with the company and asking them to host a party for you. So this would be like me, the Park Lane jewelry rep, going to my friend Sally and saying, Sally, I want you to host a jewelry party for me. And Sally's responsibility in that situation would be to host the event, to find a venue, whether that's your own home or a neutral location, maybe it's an online party on Facebook Live or something. It's Sally's responsibility to provide any of the refreshments maybe that you want to have at your party. It's Sally's responsibility to invite all of the guests. And then me as the Park Lane jewelry rep, I just show up on the date and time with my inventory or with my marketing materials or whatever. And it's my job to pitch the products to Sally's guests. This is such a common strategy for MLMs like Mary Kay or Avon, Pampered Chef, Pure Romance, Scentsy, LuLaRoe, pretty much any company with a product that is really easy to demo and pitch and sell within that party setting. So Park Lane being a jewelry company, it's really easy to show up at the party and be like, look at this jewelry, put it on, look at yourself in the mirror, isn't that beautiful? Don't you wanna buy it? You can have it right now today. Versus companies that sell more consumable products like health and wellness MLMs, MLMs that require you to take the product for a period of time to see some kind of result out of them. Those kinds of things are a lot harder to sell in a party setting because you can't just apply it or put it on or demo it and show people how it works kind of thing. But anyway, with party-based MLMs, usually the host of that party, so in this case, my friend Sally, they would have some kind of incentive to be the host. So it's like, okay, if your guests purchase X number of dollars in product tonight, you're gonna get a free gift for being the host or something along those lines. So the host will get a reward for hosting the party. The attendees will ideally sit and listen to the pitch and then make purchases. And the MLM rep will obviously benefit by way of making a commission on those sales or hitting their sales goal by selling 10 products at the party or whatever it is. So that's kind of the roles of the different people at an MLM party. Additionally, it is the MLM rep's responsibility now to take those orders or those wish lists as they keep calling them. And now they go, they place those orders Orders and they distribute that product to the customers. Or if your MLM requires you to hold inventory, then you're gonna bring that stockpile of inventory to that party and sell it to the customer on the spot. Put simply, that's kind of how parties function. Ideally, they're meant to be beneficial for all the different people involved. Everyone's getting something out of it, but more often than not, what kind of ends up happening is people get suckered into these parties or they don't know that they're going to an MLM party when they're invited. Sometimes you might host a party and nobody buys anything and then you've wasted a whole evening. There's a lot of ways that these parties can potentially go wrong. And people love to tell me their super cringy MLM party stories and I include them in my horror stories videos. Very entertaining, but also very apparent that parties don't always work out as beautifully as you think they're going to. Lots of uncomfortable, cringy scenarios can arise, but that's kind of besides the point. These days in post COVID times, now we're seeing a lot of online or virtual parties happening, maybe on Facebook Live or on Zoom, where instead of gathering in person at the host's house, now you're doing it in an online platform. But like I mentioned previously, parties
party-based MLMs are becoming less common. They're becoming less popular. People have been going to MLM parties for generations at this point, and it's getting old. Online shopping is much more preferred these days, and people don't wanna carve out entire evenings to go to someone's house and to be pitched a product, especially something that is gimmicky or overpriced for what it is. More commonly, MLMs these days are evolving to operate fully online, where there are no parties, there is no inventory. If someone wants to buy your product, you just send them your unique link, they purchase it, it gets shipped to their door, and that's kind of the end of it. And it is my personal opinion that party-based MLMs will continue to diminish in popularity within our post-COVID and internet-focused world. And I love Lori's words. They're not pushy. They're not intrusive. Like she said, it's a plus that you don't know them. So you can't already draw a conclusion or assumption. Um, I mean, it's, it's honestly magical. It's, it's so magical. And when Lori did this, started doing this guys, her bit, like it, how many did you recruit in that first month you did this, Lori? Um, well, because of course it's seed planting. So it didn't happen immediately, but I think I recruited like 12 ish in like a two month time. And that was when we were starting our um, trip earning period for Key West. And I, that was the first time ever I earned that trip in six weeks. Um, And I really do attribute it to the fact that back in November, I, and I wasn't even really thinking about the next trip at that time. I was just thinking, I need to grow my business. I, you know, I need to be team building more. So I, that was just, that was just the time it happened to happen, but then it really led nicely, which that's why the timing of this is so good. If you guys start doing that now, you're gonna improve your chances of winning our next trip quickly, which we'll be announcing before we know it. So the first lady asked, how many people did you recruit when you started doing this method? And the second lady responded with 12 people in the first two months. And by asking that question and giving that answer, these women are insinuating that if you follow these steps, you will be able to replicate that kind of recruitment volume and you can recruit 12 people onto your team too, and quickly for that matter. And I wanna show you how this math is flawed. You know me, I love my numbers. Here's a spreadsheet that I created using exponential math to show you what that would look like if every single person who joined Park Lane was able to recruit 12 people. So here's me at the top. I'm number one. If I do my part and I recruit my 12 who recruit their 12 who recruit their 12 who recruit their 12 and so on, then within 11 cycles, we will have exceeded the world's population. This would create a pyramid of 67 billion people, but the world population is only 7.8 billion people. And then if we want to take it a step further. According to Park Lane's website, they only operate in Australia, Canada, Mexico, Scotland, United Kingdom, and the United States. It's kind of funny to me that they list both Scotland and the UK, considering that Scotland is part of the UK, but the combined human population of all of these countries without counting Scotland twice is 593 million people. So knowing that Park Lane Jewelry only operates in these countries and not in the entire world, if we go back to our spreadsheet, that means that realistically this pattern of everybody recruiting 12 people can only continue for 10 cycles. But we're not done there either. If we also factor in that approximately 65% of people in these countries are between the ages of 18 and 16, 65, in other words, are within that age range of people that would most likely sign up for an MLM business opportunity. If we only consider that age range, then we're only looking at like 385 million people available to recruit, which means that now this pattern of recruiting 12, recruiting 12, recruiting 12 can only continue for nine cycles. And that is if every single person within this age range in these countries said yes and actually did sign up to become a Park Lane Jewelry representative. Representative. So hopefully these numbers and this example makes it clear that recruiting 12 people is far from easy and even farther out of the scope of reality. And this helps to show us why there can only be a teeny tiny group of people at the top of these companies. Because it's statistically impossible for every person who joins Park Lane to be able to recruit 12 people of their own. Maybe those people at the top were able to successfully recruit a lot of people, but that same opportunity is not available to all of those people 
people at the bottom of the pyramid. So in conclusion, this Mercer method of recruitment is BS. It may have worked for her at the time, but there is a very small chance that that is going to replicate itself and work the same way for you today. In other words, those recruitment strategies used by people at the top of the pyramid oftentimes don't work the same way for the people at the bottom of the pyramid because the pool of people to recruit from looks so drastically different and it's so much more limited. And the other big, I'm always thinking, I'm not thinking about the actions that you're doing today and how it's gonna affect today. I'm thinking about the actions that you're doing today and how that's going to affect tomorrow and next week and next month, et cetera, et cetera. When you are a customer turned stylist that was introduced to the opportunity exactly as Lori does it, then when you get started in your business, you're then teaching this new person that's just joined your team, okay, do you also want to grow a team and share this opportunity with others and teach others to learn what you're learning how to do and leverage your time and your income, then you're going to open the conversation and ask the questions just like I asked of them of you. Did you, were you, you know, what did you think when I asked the question? Oh, I was excited you did. I'd never thought about it. It was like so great to all of a sudden think about it. And okay, then that's exactly how the person on the receiving end is going to feel as well. And it's not for everybody, but again, it just opens the conversation. And, you know, just like we teach our kids, how will you ever know unless you ask? You don't know. You got to ask the question. So, Lori, I so appreciate you sharing. So great. And Lori has sent me some information and a video that I'm going to be uploading into boards. So we will make sure that we get all of her Mercer method and follow up and all that in boards as well. So you guys have them at your fingertips. All right. Thank you, Lori. You're a rock star Thank and I appreciate you. it. What I find so fascinating is that she's pointing out that, hey, you're going to be able to use those same recruitment tactics that were used on you on other people. Because wouldn't that statement perhaps rub some people the wrong way? It's almost like she's really admitting that this is all just a strategy here. This is a series of carefully crafted manipulation tactics to get people into the business opportunity and it worked on you. So maybe you can make it work on other people. (laughs) You're literally training people to manipulate others in the same way that they were manipulated. And I would like to think that if I was on this call and I was really making that connection here in my head, that that would feel really slimy to me. And it would almost make me feel like I've been duped. I've been tricked. I've been manipulated. And I don't want to go out there and do the same thing to other people. I'm just wondering how often that realization comes to people in MLMs. How often do people really put that piece together in their head? And once they do, how often does that lead to them taking a step back or quitting altogether? Once they realize that their main job duty is to manipulate others into joining your team for your own benefit. Okay, so here's the thing. There is still 40 minutes left on this Zoom call. We only watched 25 minutes of it, if you can believe that. But there is a third woman who comes onto the call and she spends the next 40 minutes basically re-explaining the importance of recruitment, but she's doing it in much more complicated terms. She's using so much compensation plan jargon. Like if you're an area manager, then you need four frontline leaders to advance to division manager and you're going to need this much in volume. And quite frankly, it's long winded and it's mind numbing and it doesn't get us to any other conclusion than what we've already come to in this video. So there you go. I'm going to save you 40 minutes of your precious time. I'm going to cut the zoom call off right there because I feel like we get it at this point. My overarching conclusion is that in my opinion, based on my analysis of what I've seen on this zoom call and hearing how the reps explain their own business opportunity, Park Lane Jewelry appears to be operating as a pyramid scheme. Recruitment is valued, pushed, and compensated better than selling the actual jewelry. And that is one of the indicators of a pyramid scheme. How this company has been around for so long without me hearing about it, I don't know. But what I do know is that I've seen enough and I've heard enough in this 25 minute Zoom call to have my mind made up about this company and the opportunity that they offer. And quite frankly, this just confirmed all of my opinions and my analysis about other MLM companies 
these two. It's all the same. So if you stumbled across this video because you are considering the Park Lane jewelry opportunity, I really urge you to consider what was instructed and taught on this call. I urge you to consider what your job duties might be. I urge you to consider the moral implications of that. And ultimately, I urge you not to join. I think that's pretty clear. But in the end, it is your decision. Hopefully you feel like you can make an informed one. And I will be posting some of the resources and links and articles that I mentioned in this video in the description box below if you would like some more information. But with that, that's all I have for you for this video today. I would love to know your own thoughts in the comments down below. Someone please tell me if it's just me who's never heard of this company. I still cannot get over that. And it just makes me wonder how many other MLMs out there that I'm not familiar with. There's a whole world of companies to be explored and I'm excited that I can kind of check this one off my list now. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon.